Have you heard about India's Look East policy? It was unveiled in the 1990s. The idea was quite simple to reach out to Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia or the Philippines or Thailand. But now there's a new question facing the Indian establishment. Should India be looking even further east? Where does that take us? To the Pacific. And why are we talking about this now? Because of two events. One, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's upcoming visit to Papua New Guinea. He'll be meeting leaders of 14 Pacific Island nations. And two, because of an apology from Fiji. He'll start with the last one, the apology from Fiji. Fiji's Prime Minister recently apologized to Indo-Fijians. For what? For a coup he organized in 1987. Back then, Fiji had two major ethnic groups, the indigenous Fijians and the Indo-Fijians. Now, the Indo-Fijians trace their ancestry to India, and they make a sizable chunk of the population. But in 1987, that changed. The military persecuted the Indo-Fijian community. More than 70,000 of these people were forced to flee the country. Now the Prime Minister says he's sorry. To err is human. To forgive divine. Today, I, Titiveni Lima Mandarumbuka, on behalf of those who were with me in 1987, ask for your forgiveness and pray that God will grant you the serenity the power to forgive us. God bless you all. As they say, time heals everything. Fiji's relations with India have improved recently. Prime Minister Modi visited the country back in 2014. He also announced multiple projects for Fiji. So why the apology now? Maybe because Pacific countries realize India's potential, which brings us to Prime Minister Modi's Papua New Guinea visit. Historically, this area has not been New Delhi's focus. Why is that? Because India is not a Pacific country. The focus was more on the Indian Ocean. New Delhi has just two resident missions there in the Pacific, one in Papua New Guinea and the other in Fiji. So just two missions in a region with 14 island nations. There was a lot of policy neglect and inertia. I'll give an example. In 2014, India started a new forum, the Forum for India-Pacific Island Countries. The first summit was held in Fiji in 2014. That's what Prime Minister Modi attended. The second was held in Jaipur in India in 2015. And the third will be happening later this month in Papua New Guinea. Do you see the gap? Two summits in two years, and then absolutely nothing for seven years. The obvious question is, what has changed now? Why is the third summit happening now? Because of India's Indo-Pacific policy. You can't be an Indo-Pacific power by limiting yourself to the Indian Ocean. You need a foothold in the Pacific as well. This region makes up 20% of the Earth's surface. It is home to several key trade routes. It could also become a front line in future conflicts. Let's rewind to the Second World War. The US and Japan fought most battles in the Pacific. Plus, we're talking about 14 countries here. Big or small, that's 14 votes at the United Nations. Important. So India's interest is understandable. But that's not why New Delhi is suddenly pivoting to the Pacific. That would be because of China. In the last two decades, China has invested heavily in the region. Their end game is this, to replace the US as the major Pacific power. That's what China wants. As always, the West was late to realize. And now they're rushing to make up. President Joe Biden will also be in Papua New Guinea along with Prime Minister Modi. Washington is trying to build an alliance there. In the month of March, Japan announced a plan to invest $75 billion. Now it's India's turn. Reports say multiple deals will be signed. When Prime Minister Modi is there, they'll cover small and medium industries, easing travel restrictions and cultural exchanges. The Pacific Islands are apparently interesting in two very, interested rather in two very specific things. Capacity building and disaster management. And India excels at both. Plus, New Delhi brings fresh perspective to the region. No colonial past, no World War hangover. India can be a trusted partner of the Pacific. The conditions are certainly there to force a lasting partnership. Let's see what happens on the 22nd of May.